Greetings everyone, my name is Theon and welcome to The Limitless Podcast. Joining me as always is your co-host, Dr. Matthew Preston. Hail up the people there, Matthew. Hey guys, what's good? Excellent. And today we have a stalwart of a guest in the AI space, AI boss himself, founder and CEO of Jamaica's first AI company, Star Apple AI. Also, he's the president of the Jamaica Technology and Digital Alliance. Hey, there's so much more I could go on and on, but welcome, welcome, welcome. I'd love for you to introduce yourself, Sir Adrian. Hey, big ups. Thanks for having me, everybody. Yeah, man. Uh, so this is Adrian Dunkley. Tell, yeah. tell us about yourself, Adrian. Uh, where do I start? AI boss, them call me. Uh, you're here to make a better world, you know, for the youths. Um, but yeah, it started off in science, switched to business, then switched back to science, then tried to mix it up. So, using a Jamaican talent, culture, art, intellectual, locally, and uh, trying to create the next unicorn, mm. build another US company in the Caribbean. That's the goal. Nice. And improve the quality of life for as many people as possible. Okay, okay. So, yeah. how do you plan to? This is Star Apple that you want to be the first unicorn in, or the next unicorn, I should say, in the not, Caribbean? Not necessarily. Uh, we have a lot of other ventures and a lot of other companies and partners that we support. So, whichever one reaches there first, I'll be happy. Okay, yeah. well, I think some of some people may know of Star Apple AI. But um, I'd love for you to tell us about it because I know a lot of our viewers have probably never heard of Star Apple AI. So can you yeah. tell us, give us a little intro? To Star sure. So Star Apple AI, Jamaica's first AI company, a startup launched three, three, four years ago. And the whole purpose of this company was, I don't know if you know, like numbers, that whole show of numbers. Yeah, these no. mathematicians work with the FBI and they were solving crime with maths. Mm. Right? And then you had like MacGyver going around and solving all sorts of stuff with toilet paper and toothpicks. So, when I was a kid, I said, you know what? I want to create a company to do that. Solve crime and poverty and all these things. And I realized, you know, the best way to do that is using artificial intelligence. Because this is a tool that allows you to take reasoning, knowledge, experience, and automate it to do things a lot quicker and faster. So you can use it in medicine to find cures decades quicker. You can use it in sports to create better athletes. You can use it to find problems to the biggest issues facing now. And I never viewed it as a replacement for, for humans. I mean, I watch a lot of science fiction, but I never viewed it as that. Just recently, a bag of people trying to convince me, and it's not working. It's, it's more uh, <laughs> it's a multiplier of capabilities. Yeah. It's a way to leverage what you can actually do right now. I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I really want to launch a startup. It's, it's actually probably 20 years ago I said I'm going to do this. I just never got around to it. I need to make money in corporate happy with a cushy paycheck, life and all that stuff. I can't, I don't want to be in this startup game, all these things. And then one day I just say, you know what? Expletive, expletive. That's it. I need to do it. I quit my job. Did like a little, um, what do you call it? Uh, Self-discovery tour, essentially. Traveled for a couple months. Came back and I said, you know what? We're all in on this. Mm -hmm. then COVID hit so we didn't get any business for a while so that was really funny uh, but there was a benefit for that which was everything slowed down I got time to basically meditate on exactly what this company is supposed to be I got time to really focus on the value proposition and the business model and how I wanted to really affect change in the world so COVID was obviously horrible, but at least one silver line came out of that. 
and companies may be able to go really, really fast because of that initial planning stage. And all of the risks with COVID, realizing that we are really a global community and there's a lot of things that could go wrong and something that happens over there thousand miles away will impact you or will impact your KFC bill in, in a few days. The interconnectedness of that, you realize you need as much data and knowledge as possible. So to me, it was basically a, a resolution that, you know what? I made the right choice focusing on this. And then now AI is the big thing, it's hype and whatever, but back then, couldn't get meetings with people. I go in AI conferences and play is just lonely. Barely anybody there. No, you have to like pre book to get in these conferences. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Can you, you touch on a lot of things and a lot of different industries that AI can be actually used in, but how would you define AI, artificial intelligence? Maybe from even from a layman's standpoint, somebody. Yeah, because some really of the people understand. that are listening, they, they may, I mean, they and I, you know, we're big fans of AI and stuff. We're, that's why we do, we're like, yo, we have to have this guy on. So I saw you on LinkedIn. I was like, yo, I see him, AI boss. I have to talk about this. Um, but yeah, like, how would you explain AI to like the layman? Okay. Uh, so AI has been around hundreds of years, the field, right? Uh, layman definition. I hate saying layman because sometimes people take it the wrong way, like you tend they're lame. But effectively, the field is just the focus and the development of machines that can perform human level reasoning of tasks or beyond. With that loose definition, yeah, it could be a lot of things, right? Um, sometimes it's used inappropriately, but the big thing with it is. You create a machine, a robot, something, and you give it input. It's able to reason out a useful output. I always put useful in there. Because if it's not doing anything useful, it, you can't call it intelligent, right? So the, the problem with that loose definition is what is intelligence? Um, from a human standpoint, we would say we're intelligent. But maybe there's aliens out there that say we're not intelligent at all. Look at these people looking at these rectangular things every day and wasting time. Um, or intelligence, you have fungi that are able to solve mazes. Um, you have octopuses that can like solve mathematical formulas and those type of things. And we cook up those things for like dinner. So... There's like this different viewpoint for us as to what is intelligent, right? But my thing is, as long as they can do some form of reasoning, useful output, it is the field of AI. Now, machine learning is a subfield where you're using data, a bag of data. And all of us have been exposed to machine learning, every single person and everyone listening, as long as you have a device, because tech is driven by machine learning. Every time you go on social media, shopping site, your pictures taken and posted online, you go on Google, you're using machine learning, you just never really realize it. So even though everybody's talking about chat GPT now, you are exposed to it your entire life. And it's been influencing you. And in some cases, manipulating it to make certain decisions without you realizing it. So it's not new. Can you give us an example of how it influences people to make certain decisions or sure, like sure. any uh, just regular use case? Uh, I guess the regular scary one is elections. So Trump and the Brexit election and all that stuff. Machine learning was mm -hmm. actually used to influence people online slowly and surely. So what they did there is they took all of your social media data, figured out what you liked, and then over mm -hmm. time showed you messages and videos and text to influence you to shift over to believe in a certain story, essentially. So it was a very slow and meticulous process. So the thing is, we as humans can do that, but 
you would need a million people to do that with these models yeah. train a model and it would interact with millions of people at a time refining how it talks to you and treats you to get you to trust it so it's kind of like a scammer's wet dream right uh, and a simpler <laughs> a slim simpler example would be netflix you go on netflix you don't fill out a survey they used to the surveys on netflix now but they stopped that years ago all you do is you watch a couple of shows oh. and it knows how to recommend or even tiktok tiktok has one of the best recommendation YouTube. systems mm. yeah youtube too mm. so they look how long you watch the video did you click on it did you rewatch it did you comment? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is your phone tilted a certain way? What kind of people you subscribe to. Right. Mm. Your GPS. All of these things impact what it's going to recommend to you. And they always talk about like the YouTube algorithm. Because it's ingesting so much data, it's basically a brain. And you have to try and understand now how to get it to show your videos to other people. Right? So it's it's evolved which is really what AI is supposed to do. It's supposed to become smarter as it gets more experience yeah. and data. But the problem people have now is, are we slaves to this machine? All right? How much control do we have now? So individually, we have some control, but together, it's probably only this one entity understands why certain videos do really well. Yeah. Mm. So it can get pretty wild. Okay. Okay. So I'm 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 also curious. So Star Apple AI. How how do you guys utilize AI then uh, in your company? Uh, every single facet of it. So from content creation to finance to operations, and then we develop customized models for other persons. Because the big thing is in the Caribbean and Jamaica. We weren't really building a lot of our own models. We're really, even though we like ChatGPT, it's really people just plugging into ChatGPT and using it for their own purposes, right? That doesn't necessarily work all the time for specific use cases, right? So we have to build customized models with local data in a specific way to get the best for our clients. And most of our clients are regulated too. So we can't just plug in certain stuff or just plug in an API or whatever. We have to make sure what we build is secure, tested, and reliable for their purposes. Because if it's not, that's millions of dollars they could lose. Mm -hmm. So the things you do for clients are within those same facets that you do in the in a company. So to create models that streamline certain activities within the business? Yeah, so we do fraud models, models to determine if you get a loan from a company, Models to know when to post certain content, types of content to post. Mm -hmm. We should hire. Um, what's the best way to grow an employee to be better at their job? Um, mm -hmm. All the way down to like some very weird stuff people ask for. Um, what's the best place to plant specific type of fruit that's never been grown in the Caribbean before? I we'll have to figure mm -hmm. out how to solve that problem. Or... Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to bring down a really cheap vehicle? Is it going to result in profits? Or we got a weird request about a new type of sugar one time. I won't get into that, but it's a lot of money in sugar. All right? Mm -hmm. But pretty much any problem you have, we, we use AI a lot. Not in every case, but we use AI as well as human intelligence to solve the problem. And we have a lot of problems. Mm. Uh, not just in the Caribbean, but we have a lot of problems here. So, Jamaica. Yeah, so there's a lot of work you can actually get off of it. Uh, the benefit of using AI for these approaches is you can, get, you can get a solution at a much cheaper cost and see the results much faster doing this. Mm. So a huge benefit for anybody. I recommend everybody tap into it. Just do it safely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. How do you see AI impacting Jamaica? And I'd say like some different timelines. One over the next year, two mm. over the next say three years, and then three over the next ten years. Okay. The short, uh, medium, long term. Okay. So it's doing it right now. All right. Every time you go on social media, 
you know what I mean, affected by it. Um, if you see the impact TikTok has had on younger generations, mm-hmm. even older ones, how we ingest content now, short mm-hmm. attention spans, the things that we like, the trends that are pushed up now, even see companies now changing how they interact with their clients just to fit the TikTok approach, right? So that is also affecting local entities. In a year, a big thing now is these tools are going to replace jobs, right? They are. Because if you tell a company, here's a tool, it's going to cut costs by 20% and it's going to be more efficient. They're going to tap into it. They have stakeholders. They have shareholders, right? So the big concern is and again, we don't exactly know because it's still so brand new in terms of the accessibility of a lot of these tools. So like ChatGPT, for my team to build something like ChatGPT, one, we couldn't really do it because you need millions of US dollars. But to build something useful like that is weeks and weeks of work. Now you can just three minutes and you're in. Right? So the accessibility is amazing and we love it. But at the same time, it's going to result in certain jobs being displaced. So the big thing is around the BPO and KPO sector. All right? So there's a lot of conversation about, okay, it's not going to replace jobs. It's going to make jobs better, easier. It really depends on how the employers want to treat it. All right? So studies have shown using AI tools, you are a lot better at your job, especially customer service. Why? Because it can automatically bring up things that you need to know about your client. So when you call, they call it by your name, they know your interests, and what you like. So the customer experience is a lot more personalized. See, so you're more likely to stay with the customer. But there are certain jobs where you may not necessarily need a human being to do it. So the automation plus the AI is going to replace jobs, which is not exactly sure. Initially, it was always going to replace the lower level jobs the jobs that are menial labor but it's not actually that it's going to replace the uh jobs where you probably not agree to do it right and uh, i would say in the next year to five years person coming out to university are going to run into some problems and the reason is you're going to need less people to do the same work which means there are going to be less jobs for you to get into which means it's going to be more competitive if it's more competitive employers can use that to their advantage and lower your wages because you have less less mind power effectively right so instead of taking three lawyers to do a project you may just need one lawyer because he's using that ai tool so it's not that you're completely completely replacing all the humans it's just you've made processes more efficient right mm-hmm. And that can apply to every single field in existence right now. All right? So that is the big risk. So a year to five years, it's going to be much harder for you to find a job. All right? Five to ten years, it's really hard to forecast out. But if I was going to put like my futuristic cap on and say where we're going to be, I would say, yeah, I would say <laughs> globalization is going to be your best bet. All right? And uh, because of the access to knowledge and AI actually making it easier for us as humans to learn and do things, mm-hmm. I think people are going to have more than one profession. So think back to your grandparents. They studied and they had one profession their whole life. So teacher, carpenter, doctor, lawyer. I think people are going to have two. I think wow, people are going to be interesting a, take. Yeah, I think they're going to be a doctor for 15 years. And then they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be an artist for 25 years. And then retire. You probably retire like 70 or 80. Right? Because life's technically going to be easier on you. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Less stress. Uh, To me, the three, four day weekend, I think is pretty plausible as well. Because, again, it goes back to if everybody's efficient and consistent, then... uh, you're not going to need to be at work all the time. You have more leisure time to yourself, and hopefully your life expectancy is going to increase. So that's why I say for like 10 years or more. And 
Caribbean isn't going to move as quickly as other entities. Uh, in terms of like universal income and them things, uh, I think we're going to be slow, slow to do that. Um, there's a lot of conversations around going to make people lazy, but I mean, they said the same thing about remote work, and that's not like a <laughs> cross the fence thing. I see people killing themselves in remote work because they don't know when to stop working. And the employees are getting twice the work out of them. Because yeah. the lunchroom is your kitchen, your bed is right there, the commute is like five steps. <laughs> so there's a lot of value in that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's but, very true. Yeah, very I just I don't true. see the whole <laughs> robots gonna take over the world and enslave us thing. I'm not seeing that. <laughs> There's a podcast I should probably send you. Um, there's this guy, I think his name is, I think it's Mo Gadat or Mo Gadat. He used to work at Google. He did an episode with this guy, the Stephen Bartlett. He's from the Diary of a CEO. And he spoke, uh, I think it was like a two hour podcast, really good podcast. They spoke about like AI and a lot of the, he was talking about like predictions about what's going to happen in the space and like he's saying that like essentially when you look at how fast chat gpt has got like got to this point like they're getting really good really fast and he even spoke about things like artificial general intelligence and what that could um the impacts that could be he spoke about um some of his possible solutions to the ai race and he was like saying oh i think he mentioned what you were saying about a universal base was it universal basic income where you just essentially pay people a basic amount. And then he was like going into like pros and cons of that. One of his suggestions was actually that you tax, you heavily tax the AI industry. Like he, mm -hmm. he said something where like 90% of profits or something like that is tax and things like that. And I mean, I don't know how that's going to work in capital, in a capitalistic society, but yeah. it was, it's an interesting, it was an interesting listen. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. Uh, the taxing thing is kind of funny, um, <laughs> especially if you have every industry using the tools. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it relies the funny, so heavily on it. Yeah, and, and the funny thing now, you know, is open source has been so amazing. So that is a community that does make things for free. They don't want to profit. They just give you it, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, if you want a kind of chat GPT, download it for your personal use on your laptop, you can get it for free right now. Because mm -hmm. these models right now are just like files. It's just one file is a bag of weights, numbers, mm -hmm. in in just numbers, right? A list of numbers, a matrix of numbers, and then you have the model, which is kind of tiny. And once it's built, all the knowledge is in there, numerically, just interact with it and you get the results out. So even if they put a ban on AI, you're going to have bootleggers going around the place and selling the AI for like $50,000 Jamaican in downtown. They're going to make a black market out of it, right? So mm -hmm. the taxing thing is interesting. I, very interesting to know how they're going to monitor it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I don't mind that. How do you I don't think the, the space would be? Yeah. <laughs> how do you think this space would be regulated? Because a lot of the conversations I've seen are... Uh, you know, people have been pushing AI. I mean, we've we've been pushing it to like it's like things have been coming out so quickly. Um, the next like Chat GPT three is so much different from four, and you know you have a lot of AI generated images, and people can't tell what's real from what's fake, and so on. So how do you how do you actually envision regulations happening, and what would that kind of look like? Uh, so you need the tech companies to step up, which you're trying to do. So a big thing they're doing now is they're putting invisible stamps effectively on AI content. So you can actually tell if it, if it's AI generated or not. Right? Okay. Then uh, YouTube came up with something where they're basically telling creators that they have to label the content as AI. And if you're found out, yeah. then they're going to be like fines and stuff. But that's really on the part that the tech companies the social platforms. Uh, regulation, a lot of companies, excuse me, countries trying to do different approaches to it. And uh, America has one consideration, then China has another more extreme approach, and then you have the UK and these other countries. 
And the reason they're having problems with the regulation is regulation can stifle innovation. And this is basically like a world war right now of who can have the best models. Because these models can be used for economic growth above what would be considered normal. can also be used in war. Um, so even if you have a smaller um, army, if you have 50,000 of these drones with the intelligence or the relative intelligence of um, a pilot, right, that you trained for 10 years, then, yeah, you don't care if you lose a couple of them. You can do some, like, crazy stuff. You can take a lot of risks and you can still be very efficient. So, again, yeah, it's a multiplier. The, the regulations, um, the problem is identifying if it's actually AI. Figuring out the weird ways people are going to use it negatively. And then how do you enforce it? Toughest one is enforcement. Because if you look at scammers right now, scammers are literally using a, a banger phone and making hundreds of thousands of US. Right? So if, if we're having problems with, with a, such a low-tech, simple approach, which is just people going on the phone talking to you and finessing you, what are you going to know with a, with a model that was literally trained to make you fall in love with it? And exactly. it will not relent. Wow. And it knows everything about you. So it, it's going to be very difficult to do it. I don't think it's impossible. But it's not just the government. It's going to be private entities and it's going to be people like us. Hey, Limit Breakers. If you're finding value in our content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for your support. It, it is going to be difficult. Um, and I think even with Jamaica and or I guess, I don't know if it's our regulatory landscape or legislative landscape, I should say. But I, I don't see us putting things in place quickly. All right. I think we're pretty slow in that department, but that could just be me. Um, but I, I, and for them to even understand what exactly is AI, how do you figure mm -hmm. out when something is AI? Yeah, like because if you think something. about it, to like look at the age of most of like government officials, most of them are you know fifties, sixties, seventies. So they they may hear about things like oh a chat GPT, but they don't they may not actually be using it and reading on it, and so it's like you'd probably need some younger people. And stuff who might be more reading it and because it means how just how fast it's re it's iterating like every day or every week there's a new tool there's a new update like it's just going yep. very fast so it's like even if you were to regulate something there's a by next week there's a completely new thing that you now are then going to have to understand first and then after you understand it you're then going to have to come up with a regulation for it so it's, mm -hmm. it's and by the, it's, by the time you reach there you know it's another thing it's another thing, right? Like, look how quickly ChatGPT has gotten um, updates, right? From mm -hmm. three to now. Remember being Dali able two, to... Dali three. That exactly. was pretty fast. And look how mm -hmm. much better Dali three is. Using plugins know? in ChatGPT, reading PDFs, all of those different things. So yeah. it's gotten yeah. crazy. It's actually gotten <laughs> well. It, it's gotten very much more sophisticated in a very short time period. So. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah, imagine what next year is going to look like or what GPT-5 is going to look like. Mm -hmm. I would say the reason it's so good is because of humans. So I think we should pat ourselves on the back mm -hmm. for that. So mm -hmm. the approach used to train these models is a lot of physics and it's a lot of people. So they call it reinforcement learning, human in the loop. You actually have somebody effectively talking to it. And uh, so open I hired a lot of people. I don't know if they're paying them well. But they have to talk to it. They have to go through all of the data to figure out what are the things that are useful and not useful. So a lot of things go into it. But it's still a bag of humans trying to make it what it is, right? Uh, so the reason it's progressing so fast is, is human innovation, effectively. And then people really wanting to develop a technology that are good. But you're right. This is going to be used for bad um, but once it's something that you can digitize, you can get a, you can get an AI model to do it for you. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So you're right. Two years ago, AI is doing realistic art. People are like, what? What are you talking about? That's crazy. But 
when you get that art on the, on your screen, it's just pixels, right? So you can mathematically mm-hmm. represent it. And yeah. when it comes down to does it have soul, does it feel the same way, all of these things, we're going to be studying that for probably decades. What are some ways you suggest that um, people incorporate AI or could incorporate AI into their lives right now? Yeah, especially for our listeners, um, mm-hmm. some of who may not be using AI as much. Mm-hmm. Okay, I start high level and then work my way down. So, ChatGPT, first thing, you need help with a business plan, you need help with a speech. Preparing for a meeting, you want some advice on the meeting. Uh, let's say you're, you want to go into a meeting and sound like Warren Buffett, for instance. You can effectively prompt it to sound like Warren Buffett. Go in there and sound like Warren Buffett if you want, right? But it's still kind of wonky in terms of actual facts. So you have to be very careful with that. So that's the first stage. That's the easiest one to get into because you don't have to code or really learn much of anything. Step below that is actually learning about machine learning, right? And then using other tools. So you have DALI, for instance, which... So DALI uses something called a diffusion model, Right? And think of the fusion like when you pour syrup in a cup of water and you see how like the syrup expands. Uh so it basically uses that. In the in the loosest way I can present it, very loose, right? Think of it like I gave you a painting done and then I took up every single paint splotch from the painting. Until there is nothing on the canvas. And then I ask you, repaint it from memory. Right? But I say, oh, what was in the painting? Oh, there was a duck in the painting and there was a building in the painting. I say, repaint the painting with a duck in a building. 100%. And then you did that. But you had to do it over and over and over again. That's effectively what it's trying to do. So it understands what the text means in terms of a piece of art to the point now when you say, oh, I want a building shaped like a duck. It's able to combine those to create a building shaped like a duck, even though it hasn't seen exactly that. So you're Mm kind of creating a model that has imagination in a sense. Right? So start off with the art one because it's very easy for you to see it and play around with it. Uh, step down is prompting. So prompt engineering, they call it. But prompt engineering is just coding with, with the English language or whichever language you speak. The reason I said that, that is the better you can talk to these models, the better the output, the better it is at giving you what you want. And that's a skill. It's a really important skill these days. But how popular chat GPT is. Uh, next step, mm-hmm. automation. You can use these models to automate a lot of processes. So, for instance, our social media is partially automated, our newsletters, all of these things are pretty much automated, but they're using some form of machine learning there to figure out the best time to post, the best content, the best colors, all of these things in there, right? And then if you want to go deeper now, that's where you actually say, let me study machine learning and build a lot of models. Because ChatGPT is just one of the small... AI models that you can actually utilize. There's other models. You're interested in um, stocks and and trading. Mm-hmm. There's models for forecasting stocks and trading. You're interested? In, yeah, yeah. You're interested in um, recommendation models to figure out what type of book you could write. You can tap into that. There's a huge, huge, huge universe of models that nobody's talking about right now that are actually bringing in the most money internationally mm-hmm. one of the ones i like is yep. um perplexity i don't know if you know about it yeah perplexity yeah, yeah yeah are there any ways you use ai in your life uh yeah, yeah. so um i'm not just a AI scientist building the models but i have to test out products on the market to see if there are ways we can improve it or get their clients to use it so I use it for research, and my type of research is actually finding when it's wrong. So a lot of times I'm trying to trick it to see how bad it is at doing the research. Um, art, 
So we do our custom dollies, effectively, our custom models to do art. Because what we're trying to do is create models that are able to imitate emotions that we might have about pieces. So you kind of want to look at it and get a certain reaction out of people. Right? So we do a lot of work with that. And then it's, it's good with writing as well. You need, you need some quick stuff done. Uh, no substitute for, you know, experience yet. I'll say that. Just need a human involved in the process. But, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, oh, trying to design a sneaker line. So using it for that. So I'm a big fan of Adidas, right? And uh, so, okay, let's take some Adidas shoes, take some different types of aesthetics, and then combine them and create different designs. If I were to do that normally, that's always a work and a lot of money to go into it, just to test out a concept, right? So you can save a lot of money and a lot of time using these tools. Do you have any favorite tools? Uh, let's see. Well, if you want to share Coach it, then I don't know like, uh, what kind of what? No, no, no. Huh? What well, tools do you I use have... like regularly? <laughs> so I had, well, we built this model called ProLego like three years ago, which was specifically for stock trading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes me so sort of, Yeah. So that makes me honest. So that, that's one of my favorite tools. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah. But from a non capitalist Wait, that's for viewpoint. What kind of what kind of stocks is JSE like Jamaica yeah, stock exchange stocks? Yeah, JSE stocks, right. Wow, yeah. that's kinda cool. Oh. Yeah. Well it uses it's not, more than it's that. It's not though. available. Uh we are working on it to make it uh open source or something, but it's not just um it's not just stock prices. It's also news, mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. Combines all the stuff mm -hmm. together to help you out. And it's not a short term okay. games, yeah, you're looking at long term games as well. So that one I mean the money thing is nice. Other than that, I'd say I like I like Dali, the new Dali. Sounds mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. Does really well with text. Um and it's it's a low it does well with text? Yeah, very very well with text. So you like write out really? stuff. Yeah, in I different mean, compared fonts. Compared to Dali too, I think. Like it's still it's not perfect, but yeah, it's, it's not. But I'd say compared to really Dali well. too, because we're not what, but that's how, like, when I'm, I'm, with, like, Dali 2 used to be horrible at text there. And, but, like, some of the images that I've seen with Dali 3, it can actually yeah, spell out the name properly and put it in the background yeah. and stuff. But occasionally yeah. it still has its errors and you have to, like, go over and go over. And go over. I'm gonna be at it too. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, honestly on, I, prefer Mid Journey to Dali. I'm not going to lie. The only problem uh, with Mid Journey is the, it's not for just beginners, right? So you still need some level of, like, prompt engineering. To, yeah. to actually get the output you want. That's the only difference. Yeah. The journey is free? No. No, no. Not no. anymore. Like, you have yeah, to pay it on for me, Journey. Yeah, that's what I get to. Like I, I, I rate that Dali 3 comes in with your chat GPT plus subscription. That's what yeah. I really love about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was into Mid Journey, but then it just became a lot. I just was even simple, straightforward. And then when they put in the yeah. paywall, I was like, nah, I'm jumping. Mm. So yeah. Dali came in at the, at the right time for that. But at these tools yeah, allow you to be that. really creative, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm helping kids write in like storybooks about themselves using these approaches. You have kids, wow. even adults who are like, you know, they love doing art and stuff and they're getting mm -hmm. back into like what they were doing when they were kids. Right, designing clothes, designing vehicles, because these tools are so accessible, and they allow you. Know, you spend like a half an hour to an hour on it, and you can get something that you can be pretty proud of. So, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of value in terms of creativity. The concern, obviously, is protecting the artist's work, which I completely connect connect with, and I fully understand it. Uh, it's it, that's the really rough part, I think. How do we make sure we protect those artists? Because these models were trained on their work, right? You need them for the model to get better. Because the models aren't necessarily creating anything new. They're creating something new to you by using work that has already been developed and generated. So if all the artists stop doing what they're doing right now, these models are just going to stagnate. They're not going to get any better. 
So we need to incentivize the artists. So I'm probably this is like fifteen hundred years from now where artists are supposed to be the most or the highest paid professionals in existence. Right? Because you can have a model that was built on somebody who draws loops, just little loops, but they do loops in a really good way. And that model could help you potentially solve or find a cure for bacteria that's shaped like a loop. Right? There's a lot of knowledge that can be transferred to different areas that you didn't intend to. Um, Rick, I want to talk about more about that. You were saying that you made, was it Prego? Prolego? Prolego. Um, yeah, Prolego. So could, yes. you give us, could you give us an example of a stock that it told you or suggested that you buy? Uh, so it does black portfolios or groups of stocks. Um, oh. But let's say it's gotten so good that... It would have seemed like insider trading if you didn't know any better. I'll just frame it like that. So I'm the most proud wow. of it. For that. Nice. And is and it, the reason it manages data? it. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead data, Adrian. Data, data, data. yeah, the data, the data collection is the hardest part because it's not like in other markets where you can just plug in right now, right? Yeah. So you have to collect the data from online. So, you know, Bloomberg terminals, Bloomberg terminals, they're like these terminals yes. that have like all the financial data and news and stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those aren't usually that up to date for Jamaican markets or Caribbean markets or not very popular markets as well. So the data collection is the roughest part. And I say you still need the expertise in there. So I worked in investment banking for a while. So I have a relatively decent understanding of how things are supposed to move and then how Jamaican market's still kind of weird, right? So you can move things just by putting out a post here or something in the newspaper or anything like that. So that was the most difficult part of developing it. But once you kind of get that, then yeah, you're pretty good. And the margins can get really, really um, expansive. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a long game. It's a long game. You're not just trying to... Oh, you know, IPO, ooh, yeah, mm -hmm. put in, you get, you take your money out in like three, four days. So, mm. yeah, fundamentals with some AI in there to optimize how you do things. Wow. Okay. We can talk you about it some more off the air. Yeah, yeah, that's something yeah. Preston and I are so interested in. Because I'm, I know. even right now, I was, um, I've been making some GPTs. GPT. Mm -hmm. So I was working on, I've been doing it for like some different aspects of my life. And I was working on, mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably have it in another episode, a stock picker for the JSC. And it is very hard when I'm to use chat GPT to do it because sometimes it's like, I'm telling it something and it's almost like it just doesn't hear it because I'll ask it a certain question again. And it's, it's like, it didn't listen or it didn't learn from it. So it, I'm very interested in that. We can't, we can't talk because the GPT is, there's still some limitations in, in them right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, big thing if you're using GPTs, uh, well, there's a prompt I can share with you because if you don't include specific prompts in there, mm -hmm. I could just literally go in there and figure out exactly how you coded it and all the prompts that you used. Mm -hmm. There's actually a flaw oh. that I currently have, I haven't fixed as yet. So I can just talk to it a certain way back to the finessing and it will tell me exactly the instructions you gave it which means you lose your IP effectively so I can just yeah. duplicate your GPT the, I know they're working on yeah. a store like a GPT store where you yeah. could actually monetize yes. GPT so if you put yeah. all the effort in someone just comes in and sweeps it yeah yeah so there's a way to stop it so that people can't get it out right and uh, a big thing with GPT is, is actions so they have thing called actions where Mm -hmm. it'll pull on like a website to pull so put certain certain data inside of it yeah. or tap into plugins specific plugins to do certain things for you so it it's not everything you want you still have to tap into a, the api to get it fully customized but i like how easy they made it right getting everybody really exposed to using these tools i think is really important so you know, kudos with that stock pickle 
<laughs> yeah, like sometimes, it. sometimes it's actually made some pretty good recommendations where I'm like, okay, this is good. But then it's like another time I'll just ask it and it's just like, it just goes back and I'm just like, what happened? <laughs> so yeah. the thing I like to do with those is, um, well, in, in machine learning, you have something called GANs. And effectively, what you do is you create a model, and then you create uh, another model that's responsible for going up against that model, right? So you oh. basically have an adversarial model. And what happens is, let's say your model is a stock picker, and the other model is a stock checker, right? The stock checker is like, all the function is to make sure it checks that you did something wrong. Every time you did something wrong, it'll penalize the model. Right? And then your model is going to get that penalty and be like, oh, I need to do better. Right? So the adversarial model keeps improving and improving and improving. So they get better and better and better and better at what they're doing. And that's a really good way that you could, you could basically create a GPT stock picker and then a GPT stock picker auditor, for instance. And they'll basically fight against each other and improve. Wow, that's actually like really nice. Yeah, so you, you, yeah. you can try that. Okay, Give me some hints. No, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm writing this. I am writing this down. I am writing yeah, this down. Yeah. Um, do you plan to list our Apple AI on a JSC? Uh, thought about it. Uh, I mean, there are a couple of reasons to list, right? So you need the money to do something. But there's also that thing of people listening because they want the clout. Right? Yes, big thing. Stock exchange, all that stuff. We're in a position where we don't have to for the money, fortunately. But I think we could do a really good IPO. Mm -hmm. um, first AI company in the country. So, first AI company. Margins probably must be really high. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the plan is to expand out. Uh, across Caribbean, Latin America, and then into other markets. So we're trying to push out into like the US and the UK. Everybody's trying to grab them and bring them here. But my viewpoint has always been we have enough talent here that we can actually tap into, right? It's just we need the ability to train the talent, right? So I can see local companies working with um, foreign air companies. I'm like, all right, great, that's wonderful. But my first step is always, why didn't you just get local talent? And the response is, oh, there's no local talent down here. And I'm like, mm, I think it's more you don't want a shortcut. You don't want to spend the time training and nurturing the local talent, right? Because I learned everything from scratch. I didn't, I didn't go to a U.S. university to learn anything. I've been in Jamaica this whole time. I didn't fly out and then come back or anything like that. Right, I learned from open source, which is an international community. Right, but fifteen years I've been doing this, I have a very good understanding of what is really needed to succeed in in this field. And we have more than enough talent locally. We just need people willing to enter the field and and grow it and develop it. Right, so funding would probably be used for something like that to create like an academy. Get as much local talent in and just expand out to get us into like this global force. Because the problem is no. Example I like to use. What is the biggest media distributor in Jamaica? Is that what RJR? Of Jamaica of Jamaica News. Right? And and uh, RJR is my investor. So I'd love to say RJR. But it's not RJR, it's not Steve Amazon and his people. It's Twitter or Instagram or TikTok. Oh, right? Okay, yeah. Facts. <laughs> right? So crazy. Oh, yeah, that? that's true. That's, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, Jamaica News is effectively distributed by a US entity social or. Social media. Yeah, yeah, it's social media. To the point where our media houses are using them as a primary distribution source. Right? So how much control do we actually have? If Instagram decided to delete every single Jamaican news account, they could just do it. 
what are we gonna do? Sue them? Yeah, but hold on, I'm gonna take. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna turn it to We're gonna have to like go out and start buying newspapers. Which, you know, news, I buy newspapers still. I still like reading the news. The tactile feel. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing with AI, except it's worse. Because you're using AI to manipulate or incentivize people to do something. We had no say in the development of these models. We don't know exactly how they work, right? So we're beholden to the entities that have developed them. And it's going to get to the point now where everything you do, every tool you use, is going to have AI driven in it, which means they're going to influence us. So something as simple as a patty, right? So in the U.S., patty just, talk, just speaks to the meat portion of like a burger, right? Now, that means that a patty in the U.S. speaks to raw, incomplete food. Patty in Jamaica is arguably the best food ever, right? Now, if you have a model that doesn't understand the two, and it's speaking to kids, right, three, four, or five years old, and talking about patty, they're going to be influenced to think, oh, lad, patty, Ew, that's not real food, right? So, as simple as an example that is, the problem is we don't fully understand how these things are affecting us. So there, there are nuances that we don't necessarily tap into as yet that can have an impact. There was a study that was actually done um, where they found that, they did some, it's not Jamaica specifically, but apparently there's some additional like bone growth in the back of kids' necks because they're hunching over so much because of screens and stuff like that. So mm. it's not like an evolutionary thing, but you're now basically going to have an extra bit of bone in your body. <laughs> so the impact technology is like realistic and very like fast moving. And we need to protect our culture, our identity and all these things. So that's the biggest problem as you know with, with AI. If we don't generate it locally, we're just going to be consuming everything and the AI from other entities. So we're going to lose a lot of control and potentially we're going to have to begin to other people about our legacy and our heritage. That's a big risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a big risk indeed. That is a big risk indeed. But I mean, I guess that's why you're doing what you're doing because Star Apple is, I get a Jamaican company. So at least yeah. we would still maintain some cultural ties and so on. Star Very Apple excited. Be a shining star. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> try, we try. I don't. Try. I don't just want yeah. to leave it on like a really, <laughs> like a really toxic oh, depressing. or yeah, d doom and gloom. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. But you guys are doing uh, big things. The the last time I saw you, Adrian, was at Summit. You guys held. It was a yeah. conference you held or so on. Uh, we're really not so much. It was almost like a was tech it? conference. What I was doing, I remember like, what I was doing. It? Yeah, it was tech and AI and so on. And I remember I was over by the the Heart booth, Heart Trust, and mm -hmm. they had a welding course that. Oh was, yeah, yeah. We, we had on goggles and so on, and he was teaching yeah, me yeah. how to hold the weld, the, yeah. the, the weld without actually welding. And it's like mm -hmm. it's, it's VR. I'm pretty sure it's 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 VR virtual yeah, reality. Yeah. But you have to be within like 0.5 of us, like a, like half of a centimeter away from the. It was it was crazy how they taught me, and then the the model itself as how you held your the the welding uh, machine to the piece of metal or so on. It can track it tracks like how even and your depth yes. and so on, and give you a score and everything and how it would actually be in real life. And I was just like, wow, that's a pretty cool practical way of using uh, this new technology, AI, VR, all of these different things in order to teach. And I was just like, yo, this is very progressive. And if this is at heart, that means we're doing pretty good. We're yeah. actually doing pretty good work. Yeah. Yeah, like heart. I think people sleeping on heart. That bug innovation over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we have the talent here. We can definitely uh, do it. Even with, you want to learn AI, just go online or reach out to us, whichever one. Uh, but it's no longer an excuse to say that we don't have the capabilities or the knowledge or the expertise. We can build it here locally. Positive note, it's going to make a lot of rich Jamaicans across different fields. 100%. Using these AI tools 
I'm seeing people reach out to us because um, they have apps they want to integrate the tools, find some really great ideas. Uh, it should be able to help us with natural disasters, help us with agriculture. Uh, there's actually a student a couple months ago who used ChatGPT to translate a language that has been spoken for like a couple thousand years. So he got an inscription and he translated it, right? He was an expert, archaeologist, anything like that, but he was able to use his understanding, his learnings, and then the AI tool to figure something out. Right. So, a lot of advancements. Uh, there are these really big, big, big projects where they're trying to identify all of the proteins that exist. Why? Because if you know how a protein reacts to its shape and stuff like that, you have an idea how it's going to react in your body and outside. So, it cures for malaria, uh, cures for ailments, dementia, all these things. Artificial intelligence is going to allow us to get those cures years quicker than we normally would. So yeah. There's a lot of value in, in it. We've yeah. seen it. Dude. My friend, I have a friend that uh, she was studying machine learning and so on, and she she was doing a, it was research in chest x-rays. So x -ray, yeah. a lot of chest x-rays, and I was teaching a, a, a model how to read it. And yeah. then she, after that, it started to, it got so good. They blurred the image. They could read it and diagnose the patient. They inverted it, could still do the same thing, could tell you how old you are, tell you if you're a male or a female, tell you so many things just from a chest x-ray. Yeah. And then they were doing that study compared to uh, actual radiologists and found out that um, this is actually much better and so on. So it, as a diagnostic tool, I can see it doing much, much better for medicine because it might be able to pick out something that we can't really see as well, maybe mm -hmm. not from our just naked eye and so on, and it may be able to, you know, diagnose more accurately and so on. So I see, I see a lot of perks to it, especially in the medical field, um, mm -hmm. and especially with what I'm doing now, even in an app development, doing like symptom checkers, a lot of random things uh, in medicine. I I can see how AI will definitely make a positive impact. So. Yeah. That's wicked. That's wicked. Adrian, we will definitely yeah. talk in you know, Adrian. We'll definitely yeah, talk. Yeah, we right. to we're, we're here still. We're here. <laughs> big fans yeah. of AI. Big, big fans yeah. on the Limitless yeah. Podcast. Awesome. But thank you so much for joining us, Adrian. I know we took up a lot of your right, time, right. but this chat was excellent. Me. <laughs> and I want to thank the listeners for always um you know just always tuning in to the Limitless Podcast. If you guys liked it, just like it. If you loved it, then sub. Thank you so much, Limitless. Out.